Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Technical Forum of Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Europe at the Hannover Fair 2022. My name is Bernhard Jekel. I am the moderator on this stage today and tomorrow. Yeah, we have a lot of interesting presentations. And as I um, announced it before, the next presentation is about Max Compression 2.0. And the uh, speaker is development engineer of Maximator Hydrogen, and his name is Christoph Nagel. Welcome to the stage. Yeah. Hello and welcome, everybody. I'd like to invite you to our presentation, Max Compression 2.0, and we're going to show you how we brought hydrogen compression to the next level. So um, the first issue at all when uh, building a hydrogen compressor, uh, compressor is reaching 1,000 bar. So uh, there's a magic border at, let's say, 500 bar for hydrogen compression. So uh, below this border, you will use nearly the same technology as CNG um, compressors, so for 200 and 350 bar. But beyond that, at 1,000 bar, uh, there's the tough uh, area. So what you can see here is that we would like uh, to give an overview of uh, what sort of failures could happen to, to such uh, ceilings. And uh, in our test facility, we went a lot of tests and a lot of suppliers went through our evaluation process. And as you can see in here, you will have uh, some regular wear. And this is more a continuous process, but in some cases, as we have had in our process and in our test process, you will also have some failures which will occur after 40 hours or uh, nearly immediately. And this is the, uh, the very worst case, which will cause uh, a very high service effort in a regular compression system. And so we decided uh, another approach. Basically, uh, what have we done in here? So uh, we have done testings which would uh, run the same compression processes in, uh, in the real compression chamber of the uh, stages, also under the same probabilities. So let, uh, at inlet pressures of 50 to um, 300 bar and at outlet pressures, pressures of 1,000 bar. So uh, a lot of load cycles occurred then. So nearly 10 million load cycles uh, were operated on the seals, so on, on different seals. And uh, this is the test facility we built up for that. So basically, you would have two chambers. And these two, two chambers would compress in a way that you would uh, copy the uh, compression performance in, in, a, in a standard situation. And you would also have the same uh, wear partners. So the same friction properties would also occur on this uh, compression determination. And what was the approach? We found out that our seals are capable for 400 to 600 hours, and this was uh, way too less. So in the actual situation, we're running into systems which demand 4,000 hours a year and even more. And uh, that was not the approach we would like to have. So we went for a situation which is basically like you can see it in your uh, CNC machining uh, centers. If the tool is broken, then you would exchange it. Because in our case, the seal is a low-cost article, and the service effort of a service um, uh, of a service would take some two to three days in the regular situation, and now we can do it in two to five minutes, and that's the difference. So um, this was then the uh, exhibition part, and also the st uh, station which we have right now in our systems. So uh, we are running some 25 stations in the moment of these, and there will come some 75 more of the of the actual design you can see in here. And uh, last month, we firstly hit the 30 tons of hydrogen refuelings in one month. So uh, that's a whole new, new, um, a whole new uh, area where, where we are right now, um, which, which uh, brought us to the max compression 1.0. But for future cases, even this will be very uh, will come to an end and will also be uh, quite too small. So we need 
bigger stations uh, with higher capacity and also with way, higher, uh, way more throughput. So as you can see in here, how was the seal exchange built up? So in 1.0, we had a revolver system. And this revolver system had cartridges uh, internally in a, uh, in a revolver. And if the seal was leaking, we'll have a seal detection or a leak detection. And this detection will automatically uh, conduct an, an automatic seal exchange. This is done without any hands, so it's fully automatic. And after this, you will run again the system. After 10 minutes, you will uh, be operable again. So for a service, we're not uh, spending some two to three days. Now, we just spend uh, to open the cover plate and exchange the, the seal carriers. Yeah. Our customers need higher demands, so we're not talking anymore about car refuelings with six kilograms per hour or with six kilograms per refueling. We are now talking about some hundred kilograms within 10 minutes. And so we've built another approach, which we call 2.0, and we've built that together with uh, Bosch Rexroth. So there are some, some uh, main parts uh, delivered by, by Bosch Rexroth in our stations. And what's the big aim or the big advantage of 2.0. So in 2.0, you will have nearly the same size as our 1.0 system, so a 20-foot 20, um, 20 uh, footprint. But the topic is that we are upgradable. So maybe a customer will come along with five buses and would need a refueling po uh, possibility for that. So you will buy at first the 75 kilowatt station, then the customer would expand to 20 buses, and you will have to upgrade the system, or you can upgrade the system to 250 kilowatts by not even opening the hydrogen uh, side. You will just exchange the hydraulic drivetrain, and then you are fully operable for 250 kilowatts. At 250 kilowatts, you will gain some 88 kilograms at 30 bar, so if you have electrolyzer systems. And we are also capable to have very high inlet pressures up to 600 bar, and this would lead to uh, 120 or beyond that. Uh, for the actual situation, and for the 250, we would get there at 275 kilograms. Yeah. So that's mainly the uh, max compression 2.0 uh, system. So you can see here the second stage compressor and the first stage compressor. If you have uh, still in mind the picture from the, from the uh, 1.0 system, we have now split up the system, and this is the... Um, or uh, we did that because we would like to reach way higher frequencies compared to what we have, and this means way higher throughput. So the three mass forces are covered by each cylinder movement, and uh, so we are able to reach way higher frequencies. I'm talking about lifting a 40-ton truck one and a half times per second. So these are the forces, just to give you an impression of what's going on there. Yeah. And uh, I just mentioned that our customer demands are expanding, and so also our automatic seal exchange expanded. So uh, speaking non-pacifistic, we changed from the revolver, from the Colt revolver, to the machine gun. We now have uh, 14 seals on stock, one which is operating uh, inside of the cylinder. So you can imagine that uh, this is the compressor part, and over here you can see the ASX part. Let's go into the detail. What happens uh, when you, you, you are triggering an ASX? So um, the seal leakage is automatically detected, and then you are directly going to vent the compression, uh, compression uh, stages. After depressurizing, you're going to move a slidable barrier from the operation position to the exchange position. After, uh, after performing that, Two lifting cylinders are lifting um, the new seal carriers, which are built up on a pedestal, and back again. So the seal carrier is brought from the, op uh, from the exchange position to the operation position again. After that, fully automatic venting is performed, so you don't have to do any maintenance uh, while having an ASX, and then the system is operating automatically again. 
And now I'm going to show you how this will look like. So there you can see the worn out seal, which comes out of the compressor. Then the pedestal lifts up, gives a reference point, and after referencing, you will see the exchange. And now you're pushing out the seal, and this was all you need to do. Just watch it. Nothing beyond that. Can you speed up the film? No, we're done. So <laughs> that's, that's good. Yeah. So yeah, for further technical information, I would like to uh, see you on our booth. So it's uh, C34. And that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. You were in time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid reducing the compression and the tension with the compression. <laughs> Thanks for this interesting presentation. Yeah. If there's any question, one question is possible, and then we have to skip to the next presentation. Was there one? No. One, 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 one. Okay, if not, there might be lots of questions. C34. Thanks a lot, Christoph Nagel. Dankeschön. Danke. Schön. Danke.